Okay, hola all, welcome back to Soul Mechanics. So, I would like to begin this video by apologizing for various things. One, I'm kind of unkempt, I'm not looking that well. Uh, two, Liara is still dead, so uh, we got to keep this kind of uh, brief, which brings me to three. Um, 2.5, we don't have the background, we're redecorating, so um, it means, you know, redecorating, quote-unquote, which is, means I'm cleaning my fucking apartment, but uh, we are going to see if we can make some something better for the background, I don't know, we've had a few, um, we've had a few uh, suggestions along those lines, but number three, uh, this is not going to be the quote-unquote crazy video that I had promised a few people, especially a collective YouTubers who were interested in seeing where I went with that idea. Um, I don't have, I, I really, that, that video has to, there's a lot of prep work that has to go into it. I really want to make it solid. I want to put a lot of work into it, and until I have the new phone, until I have a new Liara, I, I really just, I don't have the time or the resources for it, so... We might, we'll get on that tomorrow, hopefully, but, um, this is also an issue, a topic that I'd like to, obviously we already raised the topic, but it's an issue I'd like to speak to that ha happened, I, I'd like to get it out while the wound's still fresh, so that I don't forget about it, and, and so that I don't lose the emotion of it, really, which I already have, kind of, I mean, it's been a long while, from my perspective, it's, it's been like two days, so it's been a long, long time for me, and, uh, a lot's happened, and I kind of lost track of it. I almost forgot to do the video, honestly, but it needs to be done. Uh, so this is going to be Visibility Part 2, and in Visibility Part 3, we'll get more into precisely what we mean by visibility and, and all that it entails and, like, the practicalities of it for the most part, but this is just speaking further into what raised the issue in the first place or raised the subject matter is... Uh, our interactions with the uh, proclaimed, self-proclaimed psychic channeler, uh, Madame Tana K. Who um, she is, she's proven to me already on, on more than one occasion, on two occasions, she's proven to me that she does indeed have uh, an ability here and, and a skill and knack for using it for the most part when she's sound, when she's sound of mind and heart and she's not... Uh, you know, the, these sorts of abilities and such, anybody can use them. Everybody has them. It built into them inherently, but, you know, some people have to work on unlocking them. Some people have them unlocked throughout, uh, or through circumstances, such as hers, she says, were unlocked uh, via an NDE, which we were going to speak about in her interview, but uh, we're no longer going to do the interview that I promised you guys, this makes me feel like a fucking piece of shit, that I promised this to you guys, and it was going to be excellent, there was a lot of things that she was going to tell her story about the NDE, she was going to go over my story, she was going to do a personal reading for me, which she, she said it would, from what she could see, it was going to get pretty personal, and she wasn't sure if I would want to release it, but of course I do. I want to be perfectly open and honest, you know, uh, that's something that I will not apologize for, is being genuine, and I will continue to do that openly and, and brazenly, and this, this instance, though it seems like a mishap or a mistake, it's only cemented my concept along those lines, my, my ideology as regards visibility, that... You know, I, I am going to be completely open and honest. I don't give a fuck if some psychic tells me that my channel's going to fail because I, I'm too honest and I present truths that scare people. Too fucking bad for you. The world's changing. The world's changing really fast. And soon, before too long, uh, relatively speaking, it's going to be uh, honest, open people who share the scary truths that are going to be held in high regard. People are going to notice the value in what we're trying to do here. And, and it's going to be just like the term woke and, and the triggered thing is becoming trendy. It's going to become trendy to be the real deal, to be genuine and to not be, you know, falling into these... The, the way that people manage their lives based on what they think people will accept socially, you know, sociality's changing, so, 
As I stated, uh, Madame Tanake had warned me that Kitana, as she's calling herself, I guess that's her full name, Kitana. It's important to get that full name out there, too, because we're going to have to do a reality check for her entire group now. I'm sorry, Tana, if you watch this, but you fucking did this to yourself, man. You know, uh, and, and I saw it coming. You saw it coming. I told you, you know, you're the one who's supposed to be doing psychic readings for me. I told you what was coming, and you did it anyway. So... <clears throat> I told you how uh, Madame Tanake had told me that the channel is not going to be in t exceptionally successful because I'm too open and honest and I share frightening truths. And, and she gave me other reasons, you know, that I smoke, that I swear too much, that I'm an abrasive asshole to people. You know, uh, what else? Uh, I don't recall offhand what else she said. Oh, she said that, you know, I come across as a person who's unfocused and just kind of trailing off in my thoughts. Well, that's that's the charm of it, really. Um, I am unfocused and kind of trailing off in my thoughts as regards to the video. This is my, this is my log. This is my journal. And, uh... When, once people catch up to the idea that I do, in fact, have some pretty excellent shit to share, they're going to get more interested. So some people have. So, you know, most people who are interested in the channel can see the value in it. And I see the value in theirs, and we're working together to make something big happen, and it's going to happen. It, it's happening right now. But, uh, so she had explained to me and I didn't disclose this before, but she had explained to me that she had trained herself and been trained and conditioned throughout the course of her personal training, her personal evolution, to hide certain truths and to be om omissive, not necessarily uh, dishonest, but for the most part dishonest in the sense that she would omit certain things and obviously dishonest in the sense that she makes mistakes and she believes it to be... She believes it. I, I think she believes it. I don't know if she believes this. We'll get to it in a second. But, you know, basically she explained to me that she had been conditioned and, and had training uh, both upon herself and from others to hide certain things and to omit certain things and to avoid certain things because they will, might damage her social status and, and her ability to, you know, bring herself up through the ranks and climb the social ladder and essentially make money off of, of her talents and abilities, which is nothing inherently wrong with that, but, I mean, as I stated, A, I don't think it's, it's perfectly ethical to be you know, charging people for something that the, the, if the world gives you an ability that's helpful to other people and you deny it, you deny them it because they can't compensate you or they don't trust you enough to compensate you for it or whatever, you know, it is for whatever reason they can't pay you for it and you refuse it, that's a no-no for sure. But, I mean, charging people... To, if people want to get their fortune told, get some, you know, get an added edge or what have you, know the winning lotto numbers, whatever, and they're willing to pay you for it, great, make money off of it, fine. It's, it's any skill that's useful, talents and trades are meant to be used for some sense of compensation, I suppose, in a manner of speaking, although money is a false value, and we've gone over this before, but... It's needed. Everybody needs to make a buck. Everybody needs to make a living. And if you have this specific talent, and especially if it's the only talent you have, then yeah, you make use of it to make money, sure. But if you have an ability that's given to you, especially a, an ability to reveal truths and, and to open things up for people, and you refuse it based on lack of compensation, then that's, that's not cool at all. Um, and, and I have a big problem with that. And it... People out there who are scamming people and making money off of it, obviously they're giving people who have the true abilities a bad name. We spoke to this in the Real Thing video where we were speaking about Madame Tanake being the, the real thing, a real deal psychic. And she is. She she is for the most part. She does have the ability. She proved this to me. I mean, she said things to me that were too... They're irrefutable. They're too close and, and, and too... 
sound. There was too many details she put into this for it to be a, an educated guess or what have you. She knew what she was saying, and, and she, she was getting it from somewhere. She claims to be channeling the universe, which that's something that I'm going to have a problem with personally, is people claiming to be working directly for God, as it were, and, and bullshitting, which is... Uh, precisely what she did here in this instance. Now, working with her group, which again, we're going to have to do a reality check for the group itself, but because she's using it to make money, she's using it to make clientele, and I wanted to help her with that because she was the real deal. But in an effort to help her with that, I started uh, working with the group, speaking to some of the people that were involved with the group. The group is called tapping into the universe or something I think now it was questions for the universe at first when we when we founded it uh, together but um, I started speaking to some of the people the group members uh, via comments and what have you and I had answers I had I had questions that I raised for the group to help get it going to raise questions for the universe and for Tana K, which I had a deep respect for her ability to answer these questions and I wanted to hear what she had to say. And I don't think for the most part she didn't answer any of the questions wrong. I don't think really uh but you know obviously I was asking questions I already know the answers to but uh you know, for the group in its entirety, the group members, obviously, their their answers are important as well. It's not just her, and I don't think she, I think pretty much her idea was that she's like this head guru that, you know, all the questions should be for her because only she has the answers that the universe gives her, I guess. And that's where the problem came into play because people started asking questions. I had answers. I had legitimate answers. And, uh... I, I was getting a little cocky with the questions because, I mean, like I said, she was answering them and her answers weren't wrong. Some of them were a little off in the sense that it didn't seem like she uh, knew, she, she misused terminology. Let's, let's say that. She misused certain terms that uh, were she working directly under the universe or with the universe itself that should have been made evident to her but then again people are on different levels people have different li lives different paths different truths so uh, it's, it's terminology is not a big deal semantics but <clears throat> there were certain things she said that she should have said differently uh, in my opinion but that's my opinion anyways Winky please you're just She's a rapist. This cat will just, if she feels like she's in a the mood, then nothing's gonna stop her. You can push her away and she'll like so fucking push her way through and, and force herself on you. Anyways, I started engaging with group people like me. Things started going uh, well, and, and I had cocky answers for certain things, and I was leading her. I was leading Tana. Uh, down a kind of a rabbit hole, you know, so I wanted to see where, uh, what she would say in response to some of the things, some of the avenues I presented, and, uh, I guess she must have got mad, because, uh, at some point, I, I mentioned something, she said that people had come to her to shut off their abilities, I guess, and I guess this would likely refer to empaths, to reds, because they feel overwhelmed by them, they don't really... A lot of them don't feel they want those abilities so much, that ability. And uh, I've, I've had a lot of empaths actually ask me, students especially, but people in general ask me if I can shut their abilities off. I have no idea how you go about doing that. And honestly, to me, it seems like the wrong thing to do in a sense. It seems like a mistake. It's it, I, I don't endorse that. I don't think that that's a, a good idea at all. I think that that's like shutting off the... the pressure release valve on a, like a pressure cooker like shutting off the release valve I think that that's turning yourself into a fucking time bomb essentially and it can be damaging to you and also it's <clears throat> it's dismissing an ability that the universe has given you for a reason you know you don't just throw things away because you don't think it's a gift it is a gift trust me if, you, if it's not a gift to you it's because you haven't learned to use it properly yet what you need to be looking for is someone to train you not somebody to relieve you of your responsibilities 
of course to each his own if you, if you want to shut your abilities off and somebody can do that for you but I've never seen it done I've never even heard reference to that happening in, in real life and I have no idea how I'd go about it. And I stated as much to her, and I told her my opinion of it is that it seems kind of inhumane to do that, really. Uh, but, I mean, if she has actually done it, and it's something that she does, and people really want her to do it for them, fine. If that's a service she provides and, and it's credible, whatever. I'm not against it. I'm just saying that's how it feels to me. But in saying that, she blew up on me, and she said that she said I was presenting ego and, and hostility and ego and hostility. I mean, I was being kind of cocky, but every step of the way I was making sure she understood that I was looking up to her, that she was she was the head of the group, she's the director of that group. I pay her every respect and homage. I'm in her group, it's her group. You know, she she's the director of it and I will pay her every respect. I, I had no intention of, of uh, you know, what's the word, uh, undermining her, you know, but as soon as she got that chance to jump on that response that I gave her, she, she blew up, she said that I was being egotistical, that I was being, listen, she said that I was being egotistical because I was gaining the grace of, the, of her crowd, but then she told me, that I am not, I am no longer worthy of hearing her words. She said that to me. I mean, she made sure to every step of the way to say that it was the universe speaking through her and that she was not taking credit for it, which again is another stupid mistake. I mean, A, that's that's the same as using the ego to relieve yourself of responsibility, is, is saying that you're channeling something from some higher source. Take responsibility for what you're saying. It belongs to you. It doesn't matter where it comes from. If you're presenting it, then it belongs to you. you don't fucking pass the buck and say, that's, that's just a method in my mind of somebody saying, well, this and this and this, and, and if it's right, woohoo, thanks for providing it. I, I'm great, I'm happy to have provided it. But if it turns out to be wrong, then it's not my fault. You know, it, it just come, came through me. I don't know, I, it doesn't belong to me. It's just, it came from the universe. Well, in this case, I told her that it seems to me that, that it's pretty obvious that you're projecting onto me, that you're projecting this onto me, this ego and this hostility, because I'm not presenting that at all. And uh, I haven't done that on any occasion, so I mean, it's, I, I can see that you're upset that I'm gaining the grace here. They're gaining the spotlight, and I'll, I, I should have backed off. I could back, I could have backed off. I'm sorry, you know, I am sorry that that was happening. Uh, I have a tendency to do that, as I stated in my, in my, uh, my public service announcement, my little PSA there, that, you know, if, if, if you're working with me in this field, chances are I'm going to say something that frightens you. And if you're working with me in this field and you hold any sense of an authority, an authoritative role, yes, at some point you are most certainly going to feel threatened. I'm not saying that I hold a high authority. I'm just saying that, yeah, it'll come, it'll come across threatening because I don't, I don't believe that authority exists in any one of us. I believe that we're all equal here and no, nobody gets to hold the head role. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm the director in the sense that you guys steer the wheel and I will, I will direct the course. You know, if you guys want something to happen, I'll make it happen. If people are lost and astray, I'll put them together. I'm the director in the sense that I make sure things get done the way that you guys want for them to get done as a collective. So... Uh, you know, we're all making, like a director in a film, we're all making this film together. I'm just, I'm a, one of the people who's going to make sure that it gets done right. So, um, yeah, she said that to me. I said that, you know, it doesn't take a spotter's eyes to see that. That was very clear that she was projecting that Psych 101, it's simple, basic shit. She was projecting that onto me, and I told her, you know, that that's what's happening. It's pretty obvious, and I really urge you to reconsider, because at this point she had already told me that the universe suddenly changed its mind, the universe, and told her that she can no longer do an interview with me, 
and then she made up a few excuses going back to the smoking and the swearing as a couple of them when I had already cleared up with her that, that I would remove that from her video entirely that I would not you know do that with her uh, there and, and she was happy about that at the time and the universe was perfectly clear that we can do an interview and that it would open up many important values and it would have it would have been a big fucking deal it would have lot, done a lot of good for my channel for her effort and for all of us together it would have, it, there would have been a lot of great shit come out of that but she got scared and, and she got arrogant and she actually she told me when I told her that she was projecting she said don't tell me what I'm doing uh, you're, you're not worthy to hear my words. Suddenly, not only had the universe changed its mind about us working together, but, uh, I was no longer worthy of hearing her words from the universe. So, I mean, that's a blatant lie, you know? That's a blatant lie on behalf of the living world, on behalf of God itself and the universe. He's gonna pass the buck, blame it on, on the great creator, the source of all things, saying that it told her directly that I'm not worthy to listen to her. And then she blocked me from everything. So, of course, I jumped on another account real quick, and I got right back to her, and I said, I told her, listen, uh, you know, you just got caught lying, you just got caught bullshitting, you just got caught scamming, essentially, is what I said. And we're going to watch you from here on out. You know, I told her, be careful with what you do, because we're going to watch you, and again, we're going to do a reality check regardless, so let's hope she gets a good review, I guess, because I don't want to shut her down, but if she's scamming people, Tana, if you're out there scamming people, you won't get very far. We will stop you. You, you don't get to do that on our watch. I'm sorry, but playtime's over. The initiative is here to make sure that things sail smoothly and that people aren't stealing from other people in this way. There are so many things. Money, time, fucking emotion, emotional considerations, values of all sorts. You're just stealing from people. <clears throat> and solely to serve your arrogance and your ego. Your ego that doesn't even exist. You're just an arrogant person. You think that you're better than other people because you've trained yourself to what? Hide things from people? Gracefully? She taught, like, telling me the swearing and shit is something she, she slipped up a few times and swore. She also slipped up and let fly a few values wherein she feels seemingly terribly insecure about herself. For reasons that are totally like she thinks that she's not attractive, essentially, is the ultimate... Uh, bottom line is she thinks that she's very attractive. This girl is scorching hot. She's uh, extremely beautiful. Uh, you, I dare say like a perfect, a perfect model. But she thinks that she's uh, she's insecure about being unattractive, not being attractive enough. Which obviously, if she's trained herself to do this, that tells you why. Because she's been conditioned to feel that way, and she doesn't understand that that programming is in play. Obviously, if she's good, when people get scared, they make mistakes. When their egos threaten, they make mistakes. And, and it goes for everything. It doesn't matter if you're channeling the fucking universe. You're gonna make mistakes when you get scared. Fight or flight kicks in, and you're gonna you're gonna run. You're gonna fight. You're gonna do one or the other or both. But either way, you're gonna slip up. Now, the visibility thing to do at that point would have been to accept that, to acknowledge it, and to move along with the work that we were intending to do together. I could have backed off from her group and left the spotlight to her. You know, I could have, I could have done it. I would have done anything I can to assist her in her efforts. She, she is an extremely powerful person. I want her to be successful, but not if she's scamming people. And at that point, it became clear to me that when she feels threatened, she will flat out scam people. So that's what I have to say about her and about that for right now. I've already dragged on too long. Uh, the, the other video we'll get to as soon as is possible, and the Visibility 3 video will get more into the technicalities of it. But for now, that's the story of what happened, and that's how I feel about it. Be honest, be open, be genuine. If, if you're rejected for that, trust me, it's gonna, that's going to change. It's going to change. There are more of us out there than anybody knows, and we're all trying, we're all fighting, we're, all, we're going to win. So, 
Don't let anybody tell you that you need to hide yourself or to hide anything about you. Don't let anybody tell you to feel insecure about who you are. Present yourself and present it with pride, with grace, with excellence. Be fucking excellent. Be visible. Uh, anyway, love you guys. Thanks for watching. Kilo Salai, Terbiuni Siari. Namaste.